Welcome to EPG Path Shala. I am Dr. Neeru Tandon from Department of English, VSST College, Kanpur. We are discussing Paper 13 Linguistics and in this module number 28 known as Ambiguity has been written by an independent scholar, Ms. Anusha Chandra Mohan. In this particular module, we are going to discuss very important and very interesting concept of ambiguity in language. Now, word ambiguous, it creates a sense of curiosity. And when regarding language, we deal with this ambiguity. Now, for literary artist, this ambiguity uh, sometimes becomes a boon what they want to say, how they are saying and what are the meanings and inferences being drawn. So they have different purpose of using ambiguity. But in particular language, as we are dealing with English, so how this ambiguity comes, what are the rules, regulations, why do we use that, how do we use that, such answers are being given by Ms. Anusha Chandra Mohan in this particular volume module. So let's discuss ambiguity. It is well known fact that language is a tool for effective communication, but every coin has got two sides. Similarly, language and communication too have the other side that is ineffective communication or technically speaking barriers in communication. These barriers are produced mainly due to certain language factors such as irony, ambiguity, pun, etc. We know irony is when we say something and mean just the opposite of that in a uh, using different words that comes as irony. When we say one thing and with the same thing we can deduct two meanings that is known as pun. But what is ambiguity? Ambiguity is used in many streams like language, computer science, mathematics, physics, etc. But here we are concerned only with the language part of it. Now let's discuss ambiguity and its effect in language in detail. The nature of language is that it is flexible, ever-changing. Words and phrases can have different meanings in different contexts. Sometimes a speaker or a writer is ambiguous due to being sloppy with language. Other times the ambiguity be, may be intentional. In any case, we need to watch out for ambiguous language and discern the correct meaning before we can decide if we agree with someone. Let's define ambiguity. Ambiguity or fallacy of ambiguity is a word, phrase or a statement which contains more than one meaning. Ambiguous words or statements lead to vagueness and confusion and shape the basis for instances of unintentional humor. Moreover, ambiguity plays a major role in semantics, that is meaning, one of the four major wings in linguistics. Many definitions argue that ambiguity is nothing but a literary device causing vagueness in meaning in sentences. It may lead to vagueness and confusion, but there is a slight difference. What is that difference? At a first glance, it may seem that ambiguity and vagueness are nearly homonymic, as the definition of ambiguity allows for more than one potential conclusion. However, the possible interpretations of an ambiguous situation or phrase are limited and stem logically from the information presented. Vagueness, on the other hand, refers to a situation in which no interpretation can be successfully drawn because the information given is not clear enough. In this short self-learning video, to get some basic idea about ambiguity, you can watch it.
Now to make it further clear, let's look at some examples. Example number one, put the box on the table by the window in the kitchen. Okay, it is a sentence, but it is so ambiguous that it can mean any one of the following three meanings. Put the box onto the table that is by the window in the kitchen. And there can be take the box that is on the table and put it by the window in the kitchen. And the third may be take the box off the table that is by the window and put it in the kitchen. Example two, I know more beautiful women than Julia Roberts. This could mean either I know women who are more beautiful than Julia Roberts or I know more beautiful women than Julia Roberts does. So this is ambiguity. Example three, if students avoid boring professors. This could mean any of the following. If students avoid professors who are boring. If students avoid making their professors bored. Look at the dog with one eye. Possible meanings. Look at the dog using only one of your eyes. Keep the other eye closed and look at like this. Or you can say look at the dog that only has one eye not the dogs with both the eyes it may have another thing also if you take it as a phrasal verb looking with one eye means look look equally so that also can be an inference that looking with one eye means looking in the same way next robert saw the boy with binoculars possible meanings robert used binoculars to see the boy or he saw the boy who was holding the binoculars Thus, these are some examples of ambiguous sentences. Now let's learn more about various causes of ambiguity and its types, which makes communication more complicated. Various causes of ambiguity are polysemy, homonymy, punctuation while writing and pause while speaking. We will discuss the first two causes later, whereas punctuation and pause play a major role in creating ambiguous and funny sentences. A very famous one, let's eat grandpa. Let's eat grandpa. When the comma is there between eat and grandpa, the meaning is different. But when that comma is removed, it brings the humorous situation, let's eat grandpa. I make it more clear. Let's eat Comma, grandpa means I'm inviting grandpa to come and eat with me. Let's eat grandpa that I'm telling someone that let's go and eat grandpa, nothing else. So in this sentence, the missing punctuation is a comma without which the sentence will become funny and ambiguous. Punctuation while writing and pause while speaking or reading is a must to avoid unnecessary ambiguous situations. There are various types of ambiguity. William Empson was the first to write and publish the work titled Seven Types of Ambiguity. In his work, he critiqued poetry and regarded ambiguity as the highest creative skill. It was one of the most influential critical works of the 20th century and was a key foundation work in the formation of the new criticism school. Though he found these seven types, linguists focus on three main categories of them which play a major role in linguistics while analyzing sentences. Let's discuss those with appropriate examples. These three types are lexical, number two syntactic or structural and the number three is semantic. When a word or phrase has more than one possible meaning and may cause confusion, it is called lexical ambiguity. And this is a common feature of English and of many other languages as well. For example, chip. Chip may be a small piece of wood. Chip may be a long thin piece of potato. And chip may be a small piece of silicon being used in computers and other devices. If the ambiguity is in a single word, it is called lexical ambiguity. So examples of lexical ambiguity are everywhere. In fact, almost any word has more than one meaning. When we say the chicken is ready to eat, we know that the chicken is waiting something to eat. Or we can say the, we are, the chicken is ready so that we can eat that. For example, take the word note. 
a musical tone or a short written record. Lie, statement that you know it's not true or present tense of lay to be or put yourself in a flat position. Bank, a building where we have accounts and store the money or as we call the edge of the river, river bank. Also, we can take the word ambiguity itself. It can mean an indecision as to what you mean. You are ambiguous. An intention to mean several things, a probability that one or other or both of two things has been meant and the fact that a statement has several meanings. Some examples of lexical ambiguity. A good life depends on a liver. Liver may denote an organ or simply a living person, liver, one who lives. Sheetal is looking for a match. Match may denote life partner or a match stick. Furthermore, lexical ambiguity is classified into two types. That is homonomy. The first one, that one pronunciation with two clearly different meanings. Like bank, we already say saving bank or the river bank. By speaking, we cannot just decide which bank we are talking about unless and until it is just uh, making, we make it clear with the context. Bat, it is cricket bat or a mammal. Unless and until we put it in a sentence, we cannot just decipher by just the way of speaking. Then we have polysemy. One pronunciation, two or more distinct but related meanings. Like shooting. I'm going to shoot. What does it mean? Yesterday, one of the cameramen told me that he was stopped at the airport because he said, I'm going to shoot. And people asked that, are you going to shoot a person with a gun or shoot someone with your camera? So that is ambiguous. Face, the front of the head, a surface of a thing, a person's countenance or a person's face. Then we have a structural ambiguity. You can watch this video on a structural ambiguity before we discuss further. What does the sentence Ingrid saw the Martian with the telescope mean? Seems pretty straightforward, right? There's a Martian, it has a telescope, and Ingrid is seeing it. But wait, about half of you are saying right now, that's not at all what I thought it meant. I thought it meant that Ingrid had the telescope and she's using it to look at the Martian. Well, you're not wrong either. This sentence is ambiguous. In one meaning, the Martian has the telescope and in the other meaning, Ingrid has it. So how is it that one sentence can have two different meanings? Well, the difference between the two meanings is who has the telescope. In other words, which part of the sentence with a telescope is modifying. Under one meaning, with a telescope is modifying the Martian. In this case, we don't know anything about the seeing. Under the other meaning, Ingrid has the telescope, and now with a telescope is modifying saw. How did Ingrid see the Martian? With a telescope. Which Martian did she see? We haven't said anything about this. Arrows like this are great, but they're kind of imprecise. Is the arrow pointing to the? Is it pointing to Martian? Or is it pointing to both of them? With just an arrow, we don't really know. Instead, we use what linguists call a tree structure diagram. You might recognize it from this video. Let's start with a basic example. Here's our sentence. What can we figure out about it? One thing you might notice is that if we swap Ingrid and the Martian, we get a different sentence, but it's still perfectly good. That wouldn't be the case if we swapped Ingrid and Saw, and it wouldn't even be true if we swapped Ingrid and Martian, leaving the behind. So there's something really special about Ingrid and the Martian. They're sort of the same thing. We call them NPs for noun phrases. They both have nouns in them, but they can also have other things like the determiner the. If we're talking about NPs, then what about the verb? Just like the noun has a noun phrase, the verb has a verb phrase. And we also have an S that stands for sentence. Now what do we do with the with a telescope part? Since with is a preposition, we'll give it a prepositional phrase. And since I'm not worried about the internal structure of the PP for the moment, I'm going to use this triangle to indicate the whole phrase at once. Let's start with what happens if the Martian has the telescope. Since the whole thing, the Martian with a telescope, is what Ingrid saw, with a telescope has to be part of the Martian's noun phrase. Now what happens if the telescope part is associated with seeing? Who did Ingrid see? The Martian. 
How did Ingrid see? With a telescope. Now the prepositional phrase is up here. You can read the linear order of the sentence off the tree by reading along the bottom. Ingrid saw the Martian with a telescope. But notice when we do this, it doesn't matter where the prepositional phrase attaches. Whether it's up here at the VP level or down here with the NP, it's still going to give us the linear order that puts the prepositional phrase right at the very end. Linguists call this phenomenon attachment ambiguity. Since the confusion arises from the fact that the linear order isn't giving the listener clear information about where the PP attaches. So what? Is this just a weird property of sentences with the word telescope in them? Probably not. Let's try it with a whole other set of words. What about the sentence, I wrote the letters on the kitchen table? This sentence is also ambiguous. Under one reading, the letters are currently on the kitchen table, and I wrote them. Under the other reading, the kitchen table goes up here with the VP, and in this configuration, the letters were written at the kitchen table, but they could be anywhere right now. Here are some more sentences that are ambiguous. You should think about them. Edna hit a Yeti with the frying pan. I bought this unicycle for my best friend. Nigel remembered the concert after the rainstorm. It's good practice to sit down and think about the different possible readings that each linear order could have. Bonus! Here are two more ambiguous sentences that have slightly different attachment ambiguity. I will eat the pie that you will bake tomorrow, and one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater. Now you have seen the video and you can understand that a structural ambiguity is otherwise called syntactic ambiguity and refers to the situation in which a sentence may have different meanings because the words of a sentence are related to each other in various ways even though each word is clear and unconnected. Some examples of a structural ambiguity. Robert saw the Statue of Liberty flying over New York. Here the meaning differs as interpretations differ. Possible interpretations may be Robert saw the Statue of Liberty while traveling to New York. Another one, Robert saw the Statue of Liberty flying away from New York. Annie bumped into a man with an umbrella. Two possible meanings, Annie had an umbrella and she bumped into a man. Annie bumped into a man when he was carrying an umbrella. Again watch a short video this tutorial clip on both lexical and syntactic ambiguity. You all see the sign? It says no smoking. No smoking. Watch. No smoking. No smoking. Let's dissect this. This is called syntactic ambiguity. Syntactic ambiguity means when there is ambiguity of a sentence within the particular context. Now let me break this down for you guys. If you guys are not familiar with the term ambiguity. Ambiguity means indecisiveness. It means when something has one or two interpretations or possible more interpretations, right? So, isn't it, it kind of, it's kind of ironic, you know, that the word ambiguous itself is an ambiguous word semantically in its semantical meaning. Now, here within this particular, now, syntax, syntax syntactic actually means, you know, if you're familiar with, it, with, with the, the field of linguistics, you have phon phon phonetics. Phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. Phonology deals with how sound is produced. No, what am I saying? Phonetics! What shit you saying? Phonetics deals with how sound is produced. Phonology deals with sound. Tonal structure, tonality, consonance, dissonance. It really takes a theoretical approach to explain tonal structure. Like, like there's so many ways to say no. You could say the condescending no, the sarcastic no, like the no, condescending no, the sarcastic oh no. Then you have the conceited no, the narcissistic no, the pessimistic no, the optimistic no, um, the aggressive no, the antagonizing no. The, there's multiple no's and what determines which one of these no's has its contextual meaning is specifically dependent on its phonological tonal structure, its phonological 
cadence. So you have phonetics, you have phonology, and you have morphology. Basically, morphology takes words and breaks it down into syllables and dissects it from a, from a, from a morphological perspective. It breaks it down and explain it and it even takes subsets of phonology to explain tonal structure right so you see how they're all interrelated so I, so you have phonetics phonology morphology then you have syntax syntax deal with context like the word watch you have a watch on your hands and you have watch watch as a noun and then you have watch as looking at someone right so the word watch itself is ambiguous it's an ambiguous word although ambiguity is ambig amb ambiguous in nature the word watch itself is an ambiguous word because in one hand watch means watch on your hands a physical watch and noun and then on the other hand watch also means an adverb not an adverb a verb what should you say verb verb as an action word right go your watch right now syntactically right once the, the word watch is used within the right syntactical context, all the ambiguity is, is eradicated and it no longer has any semantical meaning outside the parameters of its syntactical meaning. Right? So you have phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax. That's syntax. Syntax deals with things within particular context. We're going to get back to this. Then we have semantics. Semantics basically deals with meaning. If you look at a word from a lexical perspective, lexical means a word, one, right? One word. If you look at things from a lexical perspective, right? Ambiguity is prevalence, prevalent, right? It's very pervasive in the field of language and linguistics, right? Then you have pragmatics. Pragmatic is basically the approach to how language is used as a society. Then you have sociolinguistics, which deal with how society... How society deals and interpret language, and you have psycholinguistics, then you have cognitive linguistic, new ling um, neurological linguistic, that's how the mind interpret language. Not to strain to all these different fields. So syntactic means sentence. You have phonetics, phon ph phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. We deal with this from a syn syn um, syntactical perspective. No smoking within a syntactical meaning. It means it is trying to tell us no smoking. No. We as a society, now if this is from a sociolinguistic perspective, as a society, we interpret this as no smoking means don't smoke, right? But the, um, the, syntactic, the syntactical ambiguity of this sentence means that it is, syntax means with a sentence again, with context and ambiguity means multiple.